on a beach. I'm on a beach. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm on a beach. Describe this beach for me. It's completely empty. Mm. And there are palm trees blowing in the it's like a breeze. Mm -hmm. Beautiful water. What color is the sand on this beach? Sand is beige. Mm -hmm. And the water is blue. Beautiful. Beautiful blue. That's a beautiful place, isn't it? It's really empty, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'd like for you to mm -hmm. focus on the observer of this beach. The one who is looking at this beach. Do you feel that you are on this sand? Or are you just observing it? Where do you see mm -hmm. it from? What perspective? I'm on the beach looking out at the water. All right. So let's find out what that feels like to be on that beach. I'd like for you to focus your attention mm. on your feet. What is standing on this beach? Look at your feet. Looks like human feet. Human feet? What color are they? They're white. Mm -hmm. And do you feel that these human feet are male or female? Hmm. What's your first impression? Male. Male. Mm -hmm. So let's focus on the rest of the body. Look at the legs and the body. What do you look like there? Hmm. Just me. It looks like knees. <laughs> What is it? Knees. Knees. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm You see knees. Short short legs. Short legs. Short legs, knees. Mm-hmm. I make it. Feel around. Imagine yourself touching mm. your body. Are you naked there? I don't see any clothes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you look like? Hmm. I am, uh, I am naked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm naked and, mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to see what color eyes. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm, I'm tan. Mm -hmm. hmm. What does your hair look like there? Dark hair. Dark? Is it long or short? Short, dark hair. Mm -hmm. And it looks like I have a scruffy beard. Mm -hmm. And I'm short. Mm. Mm -hmm. How old are you there? Mm. I feel middle-aged. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm. So I'd like for you to just feel the condition mm -hmm. of your body on this beach. How are you feeling? I feel good. You feel good. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a beautiful place. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. So what do you do when you come to this beach? Mm. I'm relaxing. Mm -hmm. Just relaxing. No one there. There's no one there. Mm -hmm. Nobody there. So let's find out how it is that you relax on this beach. I'd like mm -hmm. for you to take me with you. What do you do when you go on this beach? I sit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I sit in the sand and I look out at the water. What's out there in the water? It's nothing. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful. It's like a place of uh, rest. Place of rest. Relaxation. Mm -hmm. Think about things. Nothing mm -hmm. to do but just sit there. Mm -hmm. Be present. Yes. Very good. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to take in that feeling. Feels good. Mm -hmm. Just soak it in mm -hmm. to your memory what it feels like to just be. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do but just enjoy this beauty. Mm -hmm. Good. So now we're going to go to the next scene, mm -hmm. and let's see where it is that you live. I'm going to count from five back to one, and as we go deeper into this lifetime, I want you to see where it is that you live. So take a deep breath in. Five. Looking for your home. Four. Three. Two. And one. Be there now. 
Where are you? I'm not leaving the beach. Mm. <laughs> You're not leaving the beach. Don't want to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to stay on the beach. Let's find out why it is that you're mm. on this beach. Mm. What is it about this beach that you don't want to leave? Mm. What's there? Mm. What has brought you to this place? It seems to me that there's some sort of hesitation mm. to go back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What have you left behind? Mm. I want you to begin to see it. I'm going to count from three back to one now, and let's get a glimpse of what you came from, what you're left from. Taking a deep breath in three, Going back now to what you left behind. Two. Almost there. Begin to see the scene now. And one. Be there now. Hmm. What is this place? It's like a village. Like a village. Mm -hmm. With a lot of, well, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And it's... There's a fire. It's just a, a village scene. Mm -hmm. How are these people dressed? They have like cloths on. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I have clothes now. Hmm. Well, now I'm wearing clothes. Okay. What kind of clothes are you just wearing there? Covered around my waist. Okay. And all the people around you, are they also the same color as you? Tanned. Mm -hmm. tanned. They're tanned people. Yes. But now I don't know if they're white. They're just tanned. They're just tanned. Yeah. Uh-huh. And what is it that mm. they're doing in this village? Some people are making things. Like mm -hmm. I see furs. Yes. Uh, some people are cooking, they're living their lives, mm -hmm. but they're all relaxed. <laughs> and how do you feel mm. as you're looking at all of these people? Disconnected. Disconnected. Mm -hmm. Do you live in this village? I do, but I, I don't, I don't belong, mm -hmm. I feel. Let's find out why. Mm. Why it is that you don't feel like you belong. I want you to connect now, going backwards in time to find out why the disconnect. I'm going to count from three back to one. When I get to number one, I'm going to touch your forehead and activate that scene even brighter, even more of a memory. Begin now, three, traveling through time and space to find out why you're so disconnected from that village. Two, beginning to understand now. And one, be there now. Where are you? I'm in like a hut. I'm in a hut. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's not a lot in there. It's How old are you empty. there? How old are you there in that hut? Are you younger? I feel like I'm a kid or a teenager, young, mm -hmm. much younger. And uh, I feel like I've been abandoned because mm -hmm. there's nothing in here and there's nobody around. Hmm. So I want you to check in with mm -hmm. your emotional feelings, that feeling of abandonment. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting on the floor and I'm sort of just holding my knees. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm waiting for somebody to come back, but they're not coming back. All right. So we're going to find out what happened mm. to your family. As a spirit, you can see the scenes even if you weren't there. So mm. I'd like for you now to connect with the scenes to find out what happened. Mm. You'll know. 
What happened to your family? They left me. I don't know why, though. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Where did they go? Where did they go? They left me. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. All right. How many are in your family? I'm just seeing two. Mother and a father. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they left. But I can see them leaving. All right. Now you'll understand who mm. these are. I'd like for you to just connect with their souls. Are those two in the lifetime of tea? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. All right. Very good. So now that we understand mm. that, let's find out what happens next. We're going to move forward to another scene in that same mm. lifetime that explains the theme of that life. Go ahead and close that scene mm. and move forward to the next significant scene. What happens? Where are you? I am back on the beach. I'm back on the beach. <laughs> the mm -hmm. beaches. I want to live on the beach. I don't want to be in the village where nobody talks to me. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm shunned or something. Mm -hmm. They don't interact with me. But they feed me, which is funny. Mm -hmm. But I don't interact with people and I don't... I'm not connected with anyone. I'm not married. Mm -hmm. No children. It's like I don't... I hunt. Looks like I hunt. Mm -hmm. I bring food, but they've just adopted me. Yes. Mm. So the whole village adopted you. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm But I don't, uh, and it's not, it's me. I'm the one mm -hmm. staying separate. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to belong. Mm hmm Okay. Where did that not wanting to belong mm. come from? It's, if my parents don't want me, then nobody will mm -hmm. want me. So, so you created that I yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. So see how that is affecting your heart. Mm. How is that affecting your heart? Yeah, I've closed it off. Mm -hmm. I've closed it off. I did it. Yeah. Can you forgive your parents? Now looking back. Mm. Yeah, I don't know why they left, but they didn't want to be there anymore. Mm -hmm. So, But I feel peaceful mm -hmm. on the beach. Good. It's a nice place, so I go there a lot. So you found peace. Mm -hmm. But the peace we need to find mm -hmm. is within your heart. And what we want to do is we want to talk to your parents and find out why they left. Mm -hmm. I'm going to count from one to three. When I get the number three, who would be the best one to speak with, your mother or father? Who came up with the idea of leaving? Dad. All right. So I'm going to touch your forehead mm -hmm. once I get to number three, and we'll talk to your dad. One, two, and three. Good morning, Dad. Are you the father of this son that you abandoned? Huh. He's turned around. <laughs> mm. Why is it that you're ashamed of talking about this? He's literally turned mm -hmm. around. And mm -hmm. I just see his back. So talk to your dad. I want you to insist that your dad tell you why he left you. Talk to him. Yes. Are we mute or something? Mm -hmm. That's like... Mm -hmm. well, Let's find out. Maybe we don't talk. Mm -hmm. How do we communicate? Communicate telepathically. Mind to mind. Mm. Find out why they left you. Talk to your mom. 
she's uh, deferring. Mm-hmm. I don't know why she won't talk either. It's yes. like they're, maybe, maybe we don't use words. Mm-hmm. But you can use your own thoughts to connect. Why did they feel the need to abandon you there? What was happening to them? You can see it as pictures in their minds. Mm. I see them mm-hmm. packing up. And yes. They want a new life. Mm-hmm. They don't want to live there anymore. But I'm, I'm just a child. Do they understand their responsibility? It's like they... They don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're not connected to me in any way. Mm-hmm. So it's so almost like you're. Just leave. So you're just like a farm animal or something that yeah. they would leave behind. Just like you leave a piece of cloth before, mm-hmm. in the room and you just leave. So now that you understand that huh. these two people really had no connection to you as a child, can you forgive them for interesting. not even knowing that concept? It doesn't. It doesn't belong there. It that, doesn't belong in there in that culture. Mm-hmm. Is there any reason to hold that within your heart anymore? No guilt and no mm-hmm. sorrow. Really, mm-hmm. no sorrow. No sorrow. No. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. Really. Can you accept that? I think so because. But I've internalized it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to release it now? I felt like I, I'd done something wrong. Mm-hmm. And now you see there was nothing. No, there's no reason. So you lived your life <sighs> of being shunned your whole life mm-hmm. on your own. Mm-hmm. By you myself. Re- uh huh. Mm-hmm. Do you need to be by yourself any longer? Do you no. need to? All right. So I want you to look within you and find Mm -hmm. out where it is that you're keeping all of this inside of you. This idea that you did something wrong. It's funny. Where is it? In my heart, of course. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So if you would, allow Mm -hmm. me. I'm going to put Mm -hmm. my hand over your heart, and I want you to pull out all of those Mm -hmm. feelings that made you feel like something you did was wrong. Yeah. That it wasn't you at all. Like a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Pull all of that out. You don't need to hold that. It's Mm -hmm. very heavy. I'm going to take it. I'm going to pull it out all the way. There you go. And release it. And now, within that heart, there's space. What would you love to put in space? Oh, lots of love. Let's put lots of love in there. Let's fill that heart Mm -hmm. with love. Love, love, love. Knowing that that's what you needed from those parents who didn't know how Mm -hmm. to give you love. And let's put it into your mind also. Mm. Very good. And now, let's go to the last day of your life in that lifetime. Mm. I want you to move forward now. Now that you have taken that guilt from your heart and find out where you are in the last day of your life, be there now. (laughs) Where are you? That's a good space. Mm -hmm. I'm in a tree. Mm. (laughs) That's funny. Very nice. Yeah, like in the crook of a tree. Mm-hmm. And how does your body feel? Mm, heavy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, heavy. So in that moment now, you can kind of look through your whole life and see what happened in that life. How it affected you. I didn't live much longer. Mm-hmm. It's, it was time. It was time. Very good. So I'd like for you to take your last breath. Release yourself from that body, and as spirit, you can now look at that lifetime and see how is this lifetime affecting the lifetime of T. It makes her think that she's supposed to be alone. Mm -hmm. Does she need to carry that burden any longer? No. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you like to give her? Just live freely. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to connect with people. It's a beautiful thing. 
So is that why your spirit was, you were the way you were, you were afraid to connect with others? Mm. Yeah, it's mm. like, be alone and be by yourself, mm -hmm. don't talk to people. Mm. She doesn't need that any longer, does she? Mm -mm. No, very good. She doesn't really like it either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's not a beautiful beach like you had. No. No. Any other advice that you have to give mm -hmm. T? Makes her feel heavy. Mm-hmm. It's not natural. So it's what can you natural. release from her? Mm -hmm. I think that feeling is guilt. It mm -hmm. feels heavy and it feels responsible. Mm -hmm. It's like the weight of the world. Yes. Did that come from that lifetime or did it come from somewhere else? Has she been carrying this? It doesn't feel like that lifetime. Mm -hmm. no. Very mm -hmm. good. So let's find out where that guilt actually came from. I'd like for you to disconnect from mm -hmm. this man on the beach. And we're going to go back mm -hmm. to that lifetime mm -hmm. that created this, this guilt, this heaviness. I'm going mm -hmm. to have you go through time and space. I'm going to count from five to one, and we're going to search for the memory of that lifetime. Begin now by taking a deep breath mm -hmm. in and propelling you back through time. Five, through time and space. Oh, boy. Four, begin to see the scenes vividly. Three, getting sharper and sharper, understanding who oh. you are. Two and one. Be there now. I'm there. Oh. Whoa. Tell me where you are. I am an executioner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Poof. And I chop people's heads off. Oh, my. Tell me where you are. Look around you. I'm, I'm at a scene. I'm, I'm preparing to kill someone. It's like a medieval scene. Mm -hmm. There's a crowd of people watching and I'm big. I'm a big, big man. Mm -hmm. And I have a a, um, a hood on mm -hmm. with the eyes cut out. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a stereotype. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very muscular. Poof. So I want you to just acclimate yourself oh. completely into this body and tell me what it is that you think about when you meet these people that are you're going to chop their heads off. Um, what are you feeling? I feel like this weird feeling in my chest. Mm -hmm. And I feel, um, I feel sorry for them. Mm -hmm. Oh. Tell me more. Wow. So, I, I feel bad for them, mm -hmm. so I, I'm like the gentle executioner, uh -huh. oof, that's a funny, f never heard of such a thing. So what do you do with their pain uh, and fear? How do wow. you handle that? I just, I like, I suck it up. Mm -hmm. Are you absorbing their fear, their their pain? I feel bad for them, so I, I want them to die well, mm -hmm. like, like gently almost, Yes. but yes. not afraid and not, um, I, oh, what is that? It's like the people who come to the block are stressed out and afraid and scared and angry and that's just not a good way to die mm -hmm. so, so what do you do i just take it i pull it out mm -hmm. where do you put all of that <laughs> in me mm -hmm. <laughs> in my chest so what do you do with all of that now that it's in your chest it just sits there and uh -huh. it, it just doesn't have any place to go but i feel like it's my job to do it. Mm -hmm. I can't let them go like that. Mm -hmm. And so I take it all, I take it all. And uh, 
and then I I let them go I chop their heads off and they go peacefully they go peacefully because you've taken a part of them mm. so I want you now to look inside of yourself and see what you are carrying how many of these Oof. souls are you carrying within you so many like mm. hundreds and hundreds mm -hmm. And all of these souls that are within you, do they ever leave? Do they ever go to the light? It's like, uh, I have a very, very big chest. Uh -huh. It's like uh, oversized almost. Mm -hmm. I almost look like a cartoon. I'm just this big, burly guy with a big chest, but a really skinny bottom. Mm -hmm. And it's like my chest is gets bigger and bigger. All right. What do they call you there? Uh, Carl. Carl. I'm Carl. Carl, what we're going to do is let's speak with one of those souls whose head mm -hmm. you chopped off. I'm going to count from one to three and let's go deep into your chest and let's get a representative of those that are in with your chest. Mm -hmm. One, two, and three. You there in the chest. What is your name? Oh, I'm, I'm Jane. Jane. Jane, can you tell me what it is that you're doing there? Why have you not gone home to the light? Wow. Because Carl is really nice. So does he comfort you? He's a nice guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when he went to chop your head off, mm. where did you go? He invited me. He invited you. Yeah. How many others has he invited? A lot. A lot. <laughs> Can you see all of them there? All of these souls? It's so many. So many. Yeah. Now, Jane, you know... That when you die, even though your body is gone, your soul still remains. Otherwise, I couldn't talk with you, could I? Yeah, but Carl is, he's a sweet man. He's a sweet man. But you yeah, see, Jane, nice. there's something even sweeter. And that's the love that comes directly mm. from your creator. Have you forgotten this? This is who you prayed to before you died. To remember. Mm, I can see, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you forgot mm. that this is the one you need to go home to. This is the light that you were praying for, not Carl. But, but we don't really want to go. <laughs> oh, I know you don't want to go because it feels so wonderful yeah. in there. But see, Jane, yeah. as a soul, you need to evolve to the next level. You can't be hanging around Carl. Carl has his own evolution, his own body to live, and look how big his chest is now, with all of you there. Mm. Would you be willing, Jane, to be the one to lead the others home, if I show you how? If I show you how nice it feels? But it feels good here. Mm, I, could, I can assure yeah. you it feels even better where I'm going to send you. Carl is so nice. Mm -hmm. He takes care of everybody. Mm -hmm. And what are you doing to Carl? How you make Carl feel? His chest is really big. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's yeah. comfortable for him? I think it's painful. It's painful, that's yeah. right. So I'd like for you to mm. do something for me, Jane, is look within your own heart. Yeah. And there's a little spark there. This is the spark that I call the God spark. This mm. is the spark that reminds you of where you came from, who created you. Tell me when you find that spark. Yeah, it's, it's a little tiny light. Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to make that light bigger. Expand it out. Mm, that feels good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'd like for you to make it so big 
and it actually illuminates all of those that are within that chest, all of those others. Mm -hmm. I want them to feel that light. How does that feel to be able to spread your light so big? It feels really good. Mm -hmm. It's warm. It's warm. This is the this is unconditional love that you're feeling. This is God's love. Does it feel better than Carl's? Hmm. Carl, yeah, he's nice, but this is really better. Mm -hmm. It's warm, warm, warm. So what I'd like for you to do mm. is I'd like for you to follow that light and see what's on the other side. I don't want you to go yet, but just follow it and tell me what's there. Mm. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. Is this something that you would recommend to those others staying with Carl? It's really, it's warm and it's, mm. it's like a gorgeous meadow. Beautiful. Mm. So I'd like for you, Jane, to tell the others mm. about how they could find their way to this beautiful place. Go ahead and tell the others about that spark. And tell me what happens. They're really afraid. Mm -hmm. So are you. Yeah. So are you. Yeah, it's because we don't know. Mm -hmm. But they can see what you can see. I'd like for you to yeah. put that image in their minds and mm -hmm. tell them about their own light. Yeah. And in this place, they're going to be able to see their families again. Tell yeah. them that, Jane. Yeah. Are they willing to go? They're curious. Mm-hmm. Because I look different. <laughs> mm hmm Yeah. That's it. It transforms you, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. It's like we were gray or mm -hmm. something. So I'd like for you to send some of your light towards the others. Mm -hmm. Illuminate them. So they could find their own spark. Remind them of who they are. They are eternal beings, not been meant to be hanging around with Carl. He was just there for the moment. Yeah. Are they ready to go? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is yeah. ask Jane for all of my angels to come mm -hmm. and assist you home. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So tell me when you see them coming. There's going to be many, many of them. Ah! It's like a party. Uh huh. Ah. What do they say to all of you there? Oh, wow. They're so. <sighs> They're so. Wow. Mm hmm. They feel it. Very good. What would you like to tell Carl before you leave? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. So, Jane, tell me when everybody has left. And may the light of the universe accompany you all. Round them all up. Don't let anybody behind. There's so many people. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. May the light of God always accompany you, Jane, and all the others. Thank you so much. And now let me speak with Carl. Carl, oh. now that you have let free all of these, can you forgive yourself for holding them behind? Look, yes, at, look at your, look at your chest now. What does it look like, Carl? Feels like a normal size mm -hmm. now. Very good. It's light. Very good. Ooh. So now, Carl, you understand you don't need to hold on to these entities any longer. 
I thought I was supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. Can you forgive yourself? Yeah. For that? Very good. That's a tough job, and I thought that's what I was supposed to do. Very good. Yeah. Thank you so much, Carl. Mm. And now, I'd like for you to completely disconnect from Carl. Completely disconnect. Mm. And I'd like for you to see how that has affected the lifetime of T. Wow. Holding on to all Just, of those. Poof. So much weight. Mm -hmm. It's unimaginable. So why has she been carrying all of this weight all this time? Why did she bring that into this life? It's like a martyr complex. Mm -hmm. Just the, everybody's pain, mm -hmm. everybody's suffering. Has she been doing that throughout her life? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So not necessary, though. So now she understands that this kind executioner was affecting this lifetime? Yeah. How will she now be moving forward, understanding now that it's nice to be kind, but you don't have to take on everybody else's stuff? Oh, yeah. It's not, it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. And you rob people of their agency. They, they have to live their lives and... Mm -hmm. She can't go around taking on everybody's burdens. Mm -hmm. It's not her place. Not her place. No. Now, I know that she has not always lived lives like Carl's. No. She was told that she had some relationship mm. with the Amanchi people. Can you tell me about the Amanchi people? Or perhaps take her back to that time. What would be better? Ooh, I have to go to the bathroom. Very good. Ooh. So I'm going to touch your shoulder when I do. You mm. can completely disconnect. Open your eyes and then come back. You'll be able to go even deeper than you are now. Very good. You're doing great. Oh my God. Where are you? I am on a ship. I'm on a ship. Hmm. Describe the ship for me. It's a spaceship. Mm -hmm. And it's... It's big. Mm -hmm. It's big. What do you notice about this spaceship? It looks like a, oh wow, it has a pointy f front mm -hmm. to it. Uh huh. Almost like a wedge shape. Mm hmm. And we are tall. There's tall people on this mm -hmm. ship. What do you look like? Do you have a humanoid shape? Yes. Uh-huh. So <laughs> this ship looks like a um uh like a like the front of the Titanic. Mm -hmm. That's how I can describe it. It looks like the front of the Titanic, but it's in the sky and it is, is it black. It's black. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. What's on the inside of the ship? Can you get inside? It's almost like I can't believe what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want you to believe. That's the ego talking. I want you to just acclimate yourself into that body. Hmm. I'm at the controls of the ship.
with an like a partner. Mm-hmm. We're patrolling like a galaxy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's what we're doing because there's no urgency. We're just piloting, observing. Mm-hmm. How many are you on this ship? I think it's just me and my partner. Mm-hmm. So I'd like for you to tell me mm-hmm. what you look like. You said you were tall. We are very tall. Mm-hmm. And we have very dark skin. Mm-hmm. Very dark, dark, dark. When you say dark, what color is the skin? It's like a dark brown. Mm -hmm. Dark brown. Take a look at your hands, your feet. What do they look like? We have human bodies, but we're like super strong. So, Mm -hmm. So is it a muscular body? We're lithe. We're very tall and strong mm-hmm. with uh, a superhuman strength. Mm-hmm. But we don't fight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we, but we're strong. Now, what does this body look like besides being dark brown? Is it... We have arms and legs, mm-hmm. how many feet. Fing- how many fingers do you have? Five fingers mm-hmm. on each hand. Mm-hmm. We're like human people. Okay. And what does your face look oh. like? We have broad cheeks. Mm-hmm. Broad cheeks. And no one has hair. <laughs> mm-hmm. We have no hair. Do you oh. wear clothing? I see... People who are not on this ship, Mm -hmm. and they wear robes, Mm -hmm. like black robes. Yes. But they're not explorers. They're like uh, advisors. Okay. So what do the explorers wear? They're wearing... It looks like a costume, but... Mm -hmm. It's our travel wear, Mm -hmm. I guess. What color is this costume? It's bright. It's shiny and bright. Mm -hmm. What colors? It's like yellow. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's gold, actually. Mm -hmm. Shiny. It's so shiny. Does this costume fit tightly or loosely on the body? Armor. It's armor. It's armor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So but it it looks like this. It's it's so tight. Mm-hmm. It's a red, tightly fitted jumpsuit mm-hmm. covered in gold armor. That's what that is. Mm. Do you wear anything mm-hmm. on your head? No. No. All right. So I'd like for you to tell me, how is it that you maneuver your ship? We fly it. You fly it. In in what way? Do you have any type of gears or any type of technology? It is advanced technology. Advanced. Mm Mm-hmm. Very advanced. Mm-hmm. It's it's all controlled by um, it's like a flat screen thing with colors and stuff on it. Mm-hmm. And do you need to touch the screen? We touch it. Yeah. Yes. It's like a touch screen, mm-hmm. but so advanced. Wow. Very good. And tell me a little bit about your partner. Hmm. What kind of relationship do you have with with this other person? We're friends. You're friends. Now, in this body that Mm. you're wearing, 
Do you have male and female genders? Do you feel like you have a gender? We are dressed exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And I don't sense the gender. It's like we're neutral. You're neutral gender. Good. Yeah, neutral. Very good. So let's find out a little bit about Mm. your people. I'd like for you now to close that scene and let's Mm. move forward or backwards to allow you to connect with who your people are. I'd like for you to see yourself now with your people. I see. I see. We we are uh, sages. Mm Mm-hmm. And when we are not working, we dress in the robes. Mm-hmm. Is it those black robes? The black robes, mm-hmm. yes. So when you mm. say working, what is it that you actually do? You, you had told me that you were kind of guarding something. Mm-hmm. Or we... Uh, We have a sacred object. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is the sacred object? What does it look like? It's a clear, it clear? crystal pyramid. Mm-hmm. It's a crystal pyramid, but it's <laughs> it's not. It's a crystal pyramid with etchings on the side, mm-hmm. and it's very sacred. What do you do with this pyramid? It's a source of power. Okay. Is it a large crystal or small? No, it's normal size. It's like a... It's like four feet. F- no, what is it? You can lift it. You can lift it. It's in your hand. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's something that you can hold in your hand. But it looks big. <laughs> because you are big, aren't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very good. So, what is it that you do with this crystal? We protect it. You protect it. Yeah. What is the fear? That's associated with this crystal no fear okay so when you protect it is because you honor the crystal it is everything to us okay what is it that this crystal does for your people it powers us it powers powers. you it empowers us Mm -hmm. but it's also a source of energy Mm -hmm. very good So let's find out a little bit about, more about your life. I want you to close that scene and let's move forward to the next significant event in that lifetime that impacted the lifetime now of T. I'd like for you to move forward. Mm. Yeah, I've been chosen. Mm Mm-hmm. I volunteered. <laughs> volunteered. Very good. So let's find out what happened and what meeting did she agree to come here? Mm. It's an honor mm-hmm. to to be the to to be the protector. Mm-hmm. It's an honor, and uh, not everyone can do it. Mm-hmm. But I volunteered. Mm-hmm. What is it that you volunteered for? What is the protection that we're talking about? Every generation, there is someone who protects the pyramid, this mm-hmm. crystal pyramid. 
You can't live without it. Mm -hmm. So it needs a guardian. And I, I volunteered to, to guard it. So how do you guard this pyramid when you're not with the Amanchi people? It's in my chest. It's in your chest. Tell me more. So, the pyramid is both symbolic and real, like it's in real, real life. You mm -hmm. can feel it and touch it, but it also lives within us. Mm -hmm. So we all are powered by it. Mm -hmm. And the protector actually houses the crystal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you said that this crystal had the and was the source of the energy to empower all of your people. Yeah. So is there only one that holds this pyramid? Yes. Okay. Tell me more. Okay. Okay. So, so I crashed the ship. Huh. Mm -hmm. I crashed the ship on the patrol. Where did you crash the ship? Wow. We. We're from a different, like, dimension or something. Mm -hmm. That's why it's not making any sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're not of this, like, dimension. Okay. You're from a different density? Okay. Completely. That's mm -hmm. why... That's why... So where did okay. this ship land? Where was it crashed? On the patrol mm -hmm. with my pa ah, okay. <laughs> okay, makes sense. Tell me what happened. So we're on the patrol. I think we're just gathering data, mm -hmm. and I don't know what, why I crashed or why we crashed, mm -hmm. but we crashed in another dimension mm -hmm. and we survived but it's a completely foreign kind of place mm -hmm. was this a different planet that you crashed on that's what I'm unsure if it's a planet or just a like a wrinkle mm -hmm. went through a wrinkle okay and now we're in another place. But funnily enough, the people look like us. Mm -hmm. But they're not dressed like us. No. So what happens next? What happens after you arrive in this other place? Do you interact with anyone? We, we can speak with them because we look like them. Mm -hmm. Are you as tall as they are? Oh, we're tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are they tall also? Not really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, they're regular sized people, but we're just taller mm -hmm. and we stand out. But they, it's like a, a village, like village people mm -hmm. and they, have a different culture, mm -hmm. but we look, we look like them, so we can 
We can't blend in, but we look close enough that we can live with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'd like for you to connect mind to mind with these village people to get a sense of where it is that you are. We're in somewhere in Africa. In Africa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. And what do you do now that you're there? We assume a gender. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. I th what gender do you assume? I think that we can be male or female. Okay. Can you sh shift your body to assume this gender? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can actually change your body. Yes. Okay. Mm, it's different. Very good. <laughs> so what happens next? It's powerful, actually. Mm -hmm. We assimilate. You assimilate. Mm. Now all this time, do you still have that crystal inside of you? I do, mm -hmm. yes. So how are you affecting others with that crystal? I become the... Uh, uh, what do you call this? Sage. Mm -hmm. The wise one. The wise one. And what about mm. your partner? No, it's normal. It's normal. My partner becomes a man and marries okay and has children very good mm. so now let's continue mm. and find out a little bit more about that life i'd like for you to close that scene and move forward in that lifetime to the next important scene what happens i'm sitting in a uh, special, I think it is a hut. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting in a special hut on a raised platform mm -hmm. and people are coming to me one by one to ask for advice mm -hmm. and they're bringing tributes like tribute. Mm -hmm. Uh, tribute. It's like money, but it's not money. It's mm -hmm. Do they give you a name? Hmm. What do they call you? I'm Com Kamba. Kamba. Com. Oh, Kamba. Oh, Kamba. Oh, Kamba. Oh, Kamba. Very good. Hmm. Very good. So now I'd like for you to go to the last day of your life in that lifetime. Mm. See if you have a final day. I live a long time. Mm -hmm. I've actually outlived many people. Mm -hmm. Does your soul ever leave that, that body? It doesn't feel like mm -hmm. it. It just feels I am always me. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to ask you how it is that you are affecting the lifetime now of T. How are you associated with her? Hmm. She is wise. Mm -hmm. And people are attracted to her. So why is it that she is seeing you in this lifetime now? What relationship do you have? 
Do you guide her in any way? Yes. We are one. Uh, we are one. So being that you are mm. one, she had a question about the guardian of the truth. Mm. What does that mean? Oh, the pyramid mm -hmm. is the truth. So the pyramid is within? Yes. Tell me more about that. Oh, the pyramid. The pyramid is the source of my people's power, mm -hmm. and the power is the truth. Okay, the truth. Oh, it's the power. Mm -hmm. So how can she use mm. this pyramid and this power mm. in her life? The, so the... The people, our people are truth tellers mm -hmm. and the way we tra tell the truth is through the crystal mm -hmm. that's how we do it it's not like we're born with it it just the it powers us to tell the truth and that's what we're known for we we are the truth tellers we can't lie <laughs> So in this lifetime, how is that impacting her life now? She always tells the truth. Mm -hmm. she, even when it's painful. Mm -hmm. Has she been telling the truth to herself? <laughs> she tries. Mm -hmm. She tries. That's funny. She's, uh, she's compelled to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And she can't hide from herself, mm -hmm. even though she wants to. It's a lot of burden mm -hmm. to tell the truth all the time. It's heavy. And she had to do a lot of work on her life. Mm -hmm. Of all the things that happened in her childhood, has that pyramid helped empower her to be able to get through all of this? To speak her truth and finally get it all out? No, that's, that's the conflict. Mm -hmm. That's the conflict. She knows exactly what she's supposed to do. Why is she holding herself back? She doesn't want to hurt people's mm -hmm. feelings. Mm -hmm. And she, so she doesn't, she's not. Oh, that's interesting. It's a big responsibility, mm -hmm. and she doesn't want it. Mm -hmm. So how is that affecting her <laughs> mind, body, and spirit? It's a major conflict. Mm -hmm. It's like a block. Mm -hmm. she's, she knows that she's supposed to tell the truth, mm -hmm. but she doesn't always because she fights mm -hmm. the responsibility. Yeah, she's stubborn. Take a look in her body and see how is that stubborn. truth trying to come out. Hmm. Because we know that the body always gives a message. <laughs> she. That's funny. 
I could see it. Mm -hmm. How is it true, trying to leave? So she, she has always had acne. Mm -hmm. Even when she was a kid, it was like weird acne. Mm -hmm. And she was not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. So as long as she doesn't tell the truth, the acne will continue? Yes. Okay. So that's her sign. Yes. Knowing that as long as she continues hiding, the acne will try to bring the truth out mm -hmm. in front of her face? Yes, because mm -hmm. she has to look in the mirror mm -hmm. to see. And when she looks in the mirror, she has no choice but to see herself. Mm -hmm. So what can she work on today to finally release? We know that Carl released all of those mm -hmm. that were being held inside. What does she have inside that she needs to release? What does she need to face? So that it doesn't fears. stop. Fears. Fears. Mm -hmm. All these fears. Where are they coming from? Weird fears. Are they her fears or is she picking them up? Is she doing like Carl? They're... These fears are like nothing. Mm -hmm. Tell her about these fears. They're dumb fears. Mm -hmm. They're irrational. Fear of success. Mm -hmm. Fear of failure. They're the same. Yes. Fear of being seen. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. She doesn't like people look at her. Mm -hmm. Where's that coming Fear from? Fear of being seen. Where does that come from? Because that fear of being seen is really the same fear of success and failure, isn't it? Mm. Let's find out where that fear mm. comes from. I want you to go ahead and begin repeating fear of being seen over and over again until you see where that origin of that fear began. Go ahead and begin saying, I'm afraid of being seen. I'm afraid of being seen. Mm -hmm. Keep saying it. I'm afraid of being seen. I'm afraid of being seen. I'm afraid of being seen. Keep going back in time. I'm afraid of being seen. I'm afraid of being seen. Begin to see the pictures. Oh. Where are you? I'm in a room. Mm hmm. Hmm. How old are you there? I am young, mm -hmm. but mature. What does that mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm stunningly beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, really pretty. Uh, uh, I'd like for you to just scan that life and see what happens. Hmm. So I, I'm waiting for my husband, mm -hmm. and I think it's my wedding night. But I'm really young. Mm -hmm. I'm like the uh, fairest of them all. <laughs> That's what came mm -hmm. to my mind. Fairest of them all. Yes. So I'm very, very beautiful, and many people want me as a trophy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what happens? I'd like for you to see mm. very quickly what happens with this wedding. 
what happens with your life and what you're afraid to be seen I'm an object mm -hmm. that's what it is no one really sees me mm -hmm. they just see my face mm -hmm. and they never know me so I hide behind the face mm -hmm. And now looking at T's face, has she chosen to hide her beauty behind something? Oh, yes. Yes. She doesn't like attention. Mm -hmm. Too much attention is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Or so she thinks. Yes. Yeah. So is that why she's afraid of success? Hmm. People will look at her. Mm -hmm. What's the worst that could happen when people look at her? They will judge. Mm -hmm. They will judge. So who's the biggest judge right now of her own life? <laughs> she is. Mm -hmm. She judges herself so harshly. Mm -hmm. Harshly. Mm. Does she need to continue with that judgment? No, no one is judging her. Mm -hmm. Where is she holding all of that judgment on herself? Take a look at her body. Where is it weighing her down? The judgment is in the heart. Mm -hmm. What's it doing to her heart? She's holding it, mm -hmm. clutching it. Clutching it. <laughs> like uh, hiding it from the world. Mm -hmm. What would happen if she releases mm -hmm. that heart? Would she be loving? Would she be able to love herself? Yes. I can see it. It's like a, a hoarding. She's hoarding the heart, mm -hmm. holding it, like and turning, clutching it in her chest and turning away from the world and hiding it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would happen if that heart opened up? Oh, lots of things. Mm -hmm. Lots of things. Is she willing to release that heart now? No. <laughs> She's still clutching. Mm -hmm. It's like, doesn't want to let it go. Okay. So we're going to no. do a little, a little flash forward to see what mm -hmm. happens when that heart remains clutched. I'd like for you to see two mm -hmm. mirrors in front of you right now. One mirror contains the T with the clutched heart. And I want you to look into that mirror and see what happens to T as she gets older, clutching that heart, not allowing anyone to see her, not allowing to expand, not allowing to succeed, to do what she truly loves, to be able to impact the world. Hmm. See what happens with this T that's been holding on to all of this. See hmm. how she ages. Look at her body as she clutches. What happens to her body as it bends over, holding on mm. to that heart? And now as you look at that scene, I want you to look at the mirror on the right and see the T who has released the heart, who's mm. expanded that heart, who's let that heart go. I want you to look at her face, her complexion, the smile. I want you to see her stature, how she walks straight, her shoulders pulled up, her head high, knowing that she can succeed, knowing that she can go anywhere in the world and love all of those around her truly and be allowed mm. to be loved. Look at that one as she gets older and compare those two mirrors. What's the difference that you see? Hmm. Which, yeah. one, which one feels better? The one on the right is ah. she's like a free spirit. Beautiful. So what, are we ready now to destroy the mirror on the left? Yeah. All right. What would you like to use? I think a, a mist. Mm. Yeah, a healing mist. All right, so go ahead and 
use that. Mm -hmm. But I'd like for you to step into the mirror on the right now. Mm. And allow that mist to dissolve the mirror on the left. Dissolve it into a different dimension, Mm. one we don't need anymore. And the one on the right, step into that body. Feel that heart expanding, releasing it, filling it now. What would you like to fill that heart with? What would make it feel good? Mm, Love. Let's put Mm. lots of love in there. I want you to feel that love. Mm. Grow it out. Expand it into every cell of your body. What else would you need in that heart? Courage. Courage. Yeah. I'd like for you to go ahead and activate that pyramid within your heart that you have been keeping from others. Activate it with that energy of courage. And tell me what that pyramid does to the rest of your body. Hmm. Hmm. Really good. Very good. Very good. That's a lot, though. Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to just keep that pyramid activated, understanding that this is the power within your heart that you came here with. You came here to spread that energy to others, not only in this dimension, but in others. That all you have to do is keep your hands away from that heart, not clutching it any longer. Release it. Tell me what's happening with that heart. (sighs) It is terrified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's afraid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what that is. What is afraid? The heart or the pyramid? The heart is afraid. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes (sighs) when one is given responsibility that they're not used to, they get scared. But that pyramid is there Mm. to give energy. So I'd like for you to just Mm -hmm. talk to that heart. Tell it it's okay. It's okay to accept. And it's not going to harm you. Mm -hmm. And just begin to breathe that relaxation into that heart. I see it. Mm -hmm. And now see how the ripple effects of having an open heart can affect all of those around. The relationships with loved ones. The relationships with those that harmed her. The relationships of those who have loved her. The relationships of those in the future that will interact with her the relationships of those who will work with her and share in her adventures of life. Look at how this open heart affects all of those relationships. What do you see? Beautiful metal. Mm -hmm. It's like a bloom. Mm -hmm. Sudden blooming. Beautiful. It's stunning. Beautiful. And now that the heart is open, I'd like to ask a few questions that she brought here today. Her spirit guide met her in a garden. Can we ask her spirit Mm -hmm. guide to once again come forward and speak with her? Mm. Esperanto. Mm-hmm. What message mm. does Esperanto have for her? <laughs> he 
he said, get over yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Mm -hmm. Get over yourself. <laughs> are there any others who are helping that's Esperanto? So funny. <laughs> he is very much a straight talker, mm -hmm. straight shooter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's ask Esperanto <laughs> if you are connected with any of the archangels mm -hmm. or anybody else who's looking after you, or he's doing that on mm -hmm. his own. He has a lot of help. He has a lot of help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So was he helping mm -hmm. when you had that ayahuasca journey? Oh my gosh, yes. Mm -hmm. Was there the whole time? Does T need any more healing after that, or is she good? That was hard. Mm -hmm. It was hard for her. She felt betrayed mm -hmm. by her ego, by herself, by herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she thought that she should be smarter. She should have been smarter about life. Mm -hmm. And to f she met the ego, mm -hmm. and it was bigger than she thought. Mm -hmm. And she felt like her, her body or her person betrayed her because she listened to the ego, mm -hmm. thinking it was like, her best friend, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you like to give her? Does she need to heal any more or mm. start listening to her guides more? She's connected now. She is. Yeah, she was disconnected for a long time. Mm -hmm. So how does she know yeah. whether she's talking with her ego and she's talking to her divine guidance? How will she know in the future? She wants to know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's wants to know everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. She needs to look inside and be quiet. Be quiet. And still, be still. Stop moving. Stop moving around and listen. Mm -hmm. Meditate. Definitely meditate more. Okay. Now she does move around physically a lot. Mm. Taking people on journeys. Is there anything holding her back from exploding that business even more? She is. She's holding herself back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we have seen now that her mm -hmm. heart was closed, that she had the fear of success now. As she looks forward, how does she see that business now? She's funny. <laughs> She's a funny person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She is, oh wow, she, she is very powerful and very magnetic. Mm -hmm. But she's afraid of being seen. Mm -hmm. Causes so much crazy. It's crazy. Wow. So I'd like for her to oh. disconnect from that lifetime where she was an object. Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to give her a scene in her mind of what it's like to disconnect fully from that life. It could mm -hmm. be like that life is a boat on a pier and she can push that boat, mm -hmm. un unwrap that rope, and just push it away. Yep. Let's do that. Let's it's unwind that from nothing her. Nothing to do with her. Nothing to do. Nothing to do with her. She can disconnect the lifetime of Carl, mm. who was the kind executioner. She doesn't need to mm. feel anybody's pain any longer, take anything in. Let's release that lifetime. Mm. And now let's look at her life moving forward. Mm. These plans that she has 
of helping people realize their travel dreams. Is this what she came here to do? Or is there much more for her in the future? She's a connector. Mm, she's a connector. A connector. So it doesn't she, matter what she's doing. She brings people together. Okay. Yes. Very good. All the time. Even when she's not trying. Everybody comes together. So her purpose is to connect people. Yes. That's it. Very yes. good. So no matter whether she's in a travel business or any other business, that's what she's doing. Even when she wasn't doing travel, mm -hmm. she was connecting people good. all the time. Very good. So what is her connection uh, with Mary Magdalene and William Marshall? Is she connecting something for them? Oh, my God. What is she doing in her work for those characters? Wow. That is so amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Deep connections. Mm -hmm. Many, many connections. How is she connecting? Wow. To many, them? many, 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 many. Mm -hmm. So with... It's so complicated because it's mm -hmm. so many connections. Mm -hmm. It's like... Uh, so the connection with Mary Magdalene is a uh, fellow sister initiate. Mm -hmm. Yes. A fellow initiate. Mm -hmm. That explains it. Okay. So those are the connections for that? For Mary. And then... It's like a triangle, though. It's, mm -hmm. but it it spans time and space, mm -hmm. so it's that's why it's confusing because she's connected with Mary through the House of Isis mm -hmm. and the alchemy, and she's connected with William Marshall. Through the Knights Templar. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get it. Yes, because he traveled to the Holy Land mm -hmm. and he met the Knights there and they saw a connection. He respected them and they respected him because he didn't take sides. Mm -hmm. He refused diplomacy. And when he died, he agreed to convert to become a Templar and that is why he's buried in the Temple Church mm -hmm. and ah, the Knights Templars oh my gosh that's so complicated so Mary's daughter Mary Magdalene's daughter mm -hmm. Sarah, Mary Magdalene's daughter Sarah married a man whose descendants <laughs> became Knights Templars. Mm -hmm. That's the connection. Okay. Oh my gosh. So much power. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. So much power. So why is it that T has chosen to be the connector of all of this? <sighs> because it's the power. It's power. It's the love. It's mm -hmm. power of love. Good. It's all love. Mm -hmm. All love. Yeah. Very good. I, so she understands that now. The Templars. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So interesting. So will she be expanding her business to include uh, more of this information in the future? More she connection? should. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's all about love. It's the spread of love. Yes. And the protection of love. Because it's so powerful that people misuse it. Mm -hmm. so how, she, how can she connect to this information easier when she's doing her meditation? She has to go into the heart all the, every time. Okay. 
Don't fear the heart. Follow the heart. There was a lot of fear Mm -hmm. in the heart. A lot of fear. Unfounded fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. So blocked. Now there was a question about her relationships. About Mm -hmm. George and why they were in this life together. Can you tell me about mm. what happened there? Why did she have to experience that? Mm. Did they know each other? <laughs> They've always known each other. Mm-hmm. So many lifetimes. So why is it that they came so to be together for such a short period of time? She needed to learn how to love unconditionally Mm -hmm. no changing the person just loving them as they are that's a lesson so does she need to cut any cords with him they will always be connected okay good they will always be connected but she's afraid Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's what that is she's afraid well, of the love, of loving unconditionally. So will she ever meet someone else who she could mm. love this way? Or does she need to keep that heart open? T loves all the time. Mm-hmm. All the time. She thinks that she doesn't, but she does. She does. And that is why she's afraid. Mm-hmm. What advice do you have to give her about that? That you can't get love doesn't hurt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. It's just it's life, and she needs to continue loving. Don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. Well, in that lifetime that you showed her, she loved her parents, and her parents left her behind. Mm-hmm. Almost like. George left mm. her behind. Mm-hmm. Does she need to stop loving because someone moves on? No. Mm-hmm. And sh- and George still loves her. She loves her. Mm-hmm. Like crazy loves her. Mm-hmm. And she loves him. Yeah. Good. What about her parents? Is that finally healed? Hmm. I know she's been working with that (laughs) and with those men who abused her. Mm. What advice do you have to give her now? Is that part of the reason she tightened her hands around her heart? Hmm. The parents are complicated, Mm -hmm. I think. Hmm. I see deep, deep, deep connections, Mm -hmm. which is good, but that's a work in progress, I think. I see continuing work, but with love, it's different, it's Mm a different kind of work. Good. It's with love instead of blame, it's Mm -hmm. compassion, understanding. Good. And forgiveness. Yeah, there's a lot of forgiveness there. Mm-hmm. But it's already happened. It's already happened. It's already happened. What yeah. about with the two men from childhood? Hmm. Is that the same? Can, was she able to see it from uh, a different perspective? How interesting. So, what I'm seeing is... I was healed Mm -hmm. even as a child. She had the power back then Mm -hmm. to understand compassion. Good. Compassion. And what about the aborted baby? Has she forgiven herself for that? Oh, the baby's laughing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's tickled. Yeah. Was the baby meant for another lesson for her? Did this soul 
come here for some information for her. Oh. To learn to trust Mm -hmm. instincts. Trust your instincts. And she did that. Yeah, but she beat herself up for Mm -hmm. it. What does the baby have to say? Laughing. Okay. (laughs) The baby is not only in peace, but Oh, my God. Tickled. Tickled. Just tickled by the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Does this baby have any, any connection with her? Have they known each other? It's a friend. It's a friend. Mm-hmm. So this friend sacrificed mm-hmm. his or her life to give her this lesson? Mm-hmm. Good. And they, they're friends. They do that for each other. Okay. They've done it before. Yeah. <laughs> Good. And my last question would be mm. about her body, the way she's eating. Is it at optimal health or mm. is there anything that she needs to do to work on her body? Mm. She gets... Every once in a while, she gets uh, wanting to eat things that are not vegetables. <laughs> Again, beating herself up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Instead of just being. Just enjoy life. Enjoy life. It's meant to be lived. Good. And enjoy and just stop being so hard on yourself. Mm-hmm. No reason. Just keep enjoying life and enjoying people, spreading love everywhere. She likes doing it. It's so funny how she's doubting herself. Mm -hmm. But it's the right thing to do, and she loves to do it, to just spread joy and be joy. Mm -hmm. Very good. That's why people are attracted to her, because she's just so light. Mm-hmm. Very good. So yeah. I'd like to request for assistance in allowing her to clear up her skin now, that mm-hmm. she understands where that's coming from. Mm-hmm. Very good. And is there anything else that you would like to tell mm-hmm. T today, or are we complete? Mm. Something going on with the knees. Mm -hmm. What's going on with the knees? I don't know. Let's find out. It's like... They sound like peanuts. Mm -hmm. Take a look inside those knees and tell me what's inside. What sounds like peanuts in there? What is that? Go exploring inside of there. What is that? Is that something that T created in her knees? (laughs) It's... Oh my goodness. So silly. What'd she put in there? Such a silly girl. Yeah, it's like a thought form. All right. But it's, it's like really silly thought form. All right. So where did that thought form come from? It's a limiting, it's a limiting belief. Mm -hmm. So she can't move forward. Exactly. It's literally physical manifestation Mm -hmm. of limiting her future. Okay. Does she need that in her knees anymore? That's dumb. She created it. She needs to remove Mm -hmm. it or retransform it. What would she like to transform those little peanuts in her knees to become in order for her to move forward? Like, basically like a loving oil. Like a loving lubricant? Yeah. All right. So what what color is the loving lubricant? It's purple. All right. So I'd like for you to go ahead and begin using a purple light to begin to transform those little limiting peanuts into a nice, nice loving lubricate all over those knees. So that when she moves forward in life, as she travels from country to country around Mm -hmm. this world, her knees will be flexible, moving her taking her on these incredible journeys with others so that they can expand and connect and love the life that she loves so much. Mm. Tell me when it's done. 
They're turning purple and pink, Beautiful. purple and pink, like dancing threads. Beautiful. Oh. So make them nice and slippery so those knees can move very quickly through life. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anything else that we need to accomplish mm -hmm. today? She's good. She's good, very good. Yeah. So I'd like to thank all of those who assisted in this today. Wow. wow. Buzzing. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. How do you feel? Oh, wow. I am on fire. <laughs> there's, there's a song that sounds like that. Like literally just, just yeah. energy. Mm -hmm. Vibrating. Yes. Yeah. Like bubbles, like champagne. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So oh do you remember anything about this session? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everything. And how long Everything. do you think you were on this little journey? How did it feel to you? Hmm. Fast, long? I have no sense of time. Mm -hmm. None whatsoever. It's about an hour and 45 minutes. Really? Yeah. Wow. Mm. It could have been a day. It could have been five <laughs> minutes. Like, well, no we did a sense lot today. of time. No sense of time. We did a it's lot. really interesting. Wow. A little bit wow. different than before? <laughs> the guy on the, on the beach. Yeah. I, such a strange life. Well, he kind of... Such a strange life. He was abandoned life. and he didn't fit in and... And he abandoned himself. Exactly. That's an unusual. I've never heard of anything. I didn't even know you could do that. You could abandon yourself mm -hmm. and just like eke out an existence. Well, yeah. Wow. Amazing, huh? And he didn't need to. They wanted to love him. He just cut himself off. Yeah. Wow. As mm. you ponder some of these things, you may notice. Hmm. That you may have some connection like that in one mm -hmm. way or another. Yeah. Only you can connect the dots. Wow, so powerful. Amazing, huh? Yeah. And I learned something that is so simple. Why don't we know this? <laughs> that we are so powerful. We are amazing. That's, you know, that's one of those things that it. we're more afraid of our power. Yes, exactly. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. We're so powerful that we sh we are we sh run from it, exactly. and then we like create situations that are With so that power, yes, that are the opposite of it's what you bizarre. should. Bizarre, yeah. It's like an eye opener. It's like, bring, <laughs> <laughs> amazing. How does your heart feel? Oh, light as a feather. Mm -hmm. Light as a feather. Not clutched anymore. No. It's expansive. No, it's. Just light. Yeah. Did you ever see Lord of the? Is it Lord of the Rings? Not Lord. Yeah, Lord of the Rings. Like the that creature that was like <laughs> wanting to hold on to the ring. That's how I was holding on to my heart. No, don't touch it. A little golem work there. <laughs> don't touch it. Don't even look at it. <laughs> Amazing, huh? And now it's kind of like a little fluffy, little mar marshmallow heart. It's like it's like cotton candy. candy cotton candy. Oh, I love yeah. that feeling. Amazing. See what a great wow. experience, huh? I'm like just flying right now. <laughs> just <laughs> flying your spaceship, your Titanic looking the Titanic spaceship. looking spaceship. <laughs> That's so crazy. It's it was so realistic. Yeah. Like I wasn't sure if I was like creating the images myself, but then when I stepped back I was like, it looks like the Titanic and amazing? you're the badass flying it. So amazing. Yeah, with just Touching the screen. Yeah, touching screen. That's it was amazing. incredible. But I now realize I was part of the. I was like the spaceship was like part of you. Yeah. yeah. So I wasn't like I was like yeah. steering it with anything. Yeah, you were doing it with your mind. Mm hmm. The Amanche are really powerful people. I had no, I'd never heard of them before. But yeah, amazing. really interesting from another dimension. Wow. Pretty wild. So, how far did you travel to come here today? <laughs> I came from Medellin, Colombia. Yeah, three and a half hours away. Yeah, yeah, it was a journey. And um, mm. was it worth it? It was. I was actually looking for um, some practitioners there. Yeah. But I don't think it was meant to be. So you came. Over <laughs> so I came here instead. And you, got, and you got the session. So you were meant to be here. I was meant to be here, yeah. and. Like the journey was worth it. It was, it was really 
not what I expected, to be honest. Mm. I thought it was going to be more trancy, like more like, woo woo. And you see, this is what not. happens with, with people who have expectations of what hypnosis mm. is. Hypnosis is not sleep. You don't feel like you're drugged. Right. Right. No. You're wide awake. Just relax. You just relax. You, you know, it's relax. like when you're watching, almost like when you're watching TV and yeah. you're kind of like relaxed there. You know, you're listening to stuff, kind of. But you're not dozing off. You're right. not sleeping. Right. It's more you're listening to yourself. Exactly. And we don't listen. At least I can't speak for anyone else, but <laughs> I don't listen to myself. And I think that's why I was surprised at how easy it was. It is easy. And how easy it was to even connect with myself. Yeah. I kept thinking it was going to be more complicated. <laughs> it's not. I was like, is it more complicated? Why is it so hard? It's not. And you know, during the <laughs> session, you had a bathroom break, and a lot of people mm. ask, "What? Oh my God! You can get up and go to the bathroom?" Oh, yeah. yeah, no, it was no problem. I was relaxed. It was the most relaxed bathroom break I've ever had, but <laughs> it was very relaxed. And usually, <laughs> this is one of those those uh, weird things. Usually, your bathroom breaks are really long. Yeah, it like was, as if you're like squeezing out every bit of water from your body. That was the second. That was the release from Carl. It was the release, and it was so all his energies yes. got sent to the light, but they came out another way too. So it was really interesting. I was like, "What's happening here?" Oh, don't worry about it. Just go with it. And that's what happens. A lot of people <laughs> when they go through a release like that, mm. they need to use the bathroom, and sometimes they're in there like a long time because yeah. you need to release all of it. It comes yeah. out. It's really amazing, isn't and it? And Jane, oh my gosh, to discover that was like Jane Jane. Do you know Jane Jane? Mm -mm. Lady Jane. Oh, Lady Jane. Yes. Yes. That kind of crossed my mind. Oh my god. When you first said Jane, um, I envisioned her um, like in the Henry the Eighth yes. times. Yes. You know, that's how I envision because I see things when mm -hmm. people when people are doing this. And I envisioned her in the yeah. like with the black dress with yes. the with the white collar. That was the, her in the little hat. Yes. That's how I saw her when she said Jane. Mm -hmm. So and she was really young. So that's is that, why I was surprised. I was like, Who is this? So that's young who woman? I saw. And like, why would you be chopping off the head of a young woman? <laughs> it doesn't yeah. make sense. No, that's but crazy. now things make sense. And OMG with William Marshall and Mary Magdalene, mind blown. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell everybody what you what is the connection because first of all, she comes from Colombia, but that's not really where she like no. lives all the time. This is where no. she is right now. Yeah. Explain to everybody what you do. So I am a location independent entrepreneur, a travel entrepreneur, and I travel around the world full time. Uh, doing different things. So I not only plan other people's vacations, but I also have these history inspired tours that I do. And one of my companies follows the life of a medieval knight, William Marshall. So the company is William Marshall Tours. And I've always wanted to know why am I so connected to this man? I don't now you know. Now I know. And not only him, but Mary Magdalene. So now I feel like maybe there'll be some Mary Magdalene tours coming yeah. up because You're she's connected. so powerful absolutely and she's historically really significant really so, significant so if someone wants to mm. plan a vacation you plan tours like in groups or what yeah so i do small group tours and i also do private client uh, work as well so i have a, a group of clients that i work with uh through one of my travel brands but the william marshall tours is my baby yeah he's my guy and, and where can uh, they get a hold of you Well, they can always go to William Marshall Tours. That's one business. Or they could go to McNeilLuxuryTravel.com. <laughs> There you go. Thank so, you. yeah. And, and you awesome. know, the, the thing is that I meet a lot of very interesting people. <laughs> and uh, I connect a lot of dots. Nobody comes here um, by accident, you know. Yeah. There's, also, there's always a connection. Uh, you know, we, we talked about another session that I had that kind of connects <gasps> with this one. Yeah. So, oh my you know, it, 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 yes. I connect a lot of dots, yes. too. I may not yes. remember my sessions, but some of them just stand out. So, yes. And we connected a dot with another client. Yes. Are we allowed to do that? <laughs> <laughs> but I watched it, so she didn't tell me, but I connected yeah. the dots. Yeah, the Knights Templar. Oh, so my God, the Knights Templar. If you're an Templars. avid watcher, you'll know yes. which one that is. You'll know exactly who he is. Yes, yes. Oh, my God. When I connected those two dots, yeah. 
during this session, there was a part of me that just refused to believe it at first mm -hmm. because I was thinking to myself, that can't be true. <laughs> it's so out there and so big yeah. that it can't possibly be true. But truth is stranger than fiction. Yeah, it is. It is. So I know for a fact, like I have to trust my instincts yeah. and everybody has to trust their own. Mm -hmm. Listen, we all watch everybody else's sessions, but mm -hmm. you have to follow your own gut and your own instincts. Mm -hmm. What you're watching is not necessarily what they are watching. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even though they're saying something, you may be interpreting totally different than what, mm -hmm. what they're experiencing. So, mm -hmm. um, just trust your own instincts and discern your, you know, with your heart. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I hope you enjoyed this session. If you want a session with me, go to my website, albawoman.com. You'll sign up for my newsletter, which you did. And it comes out about once a month. It tells you where I am all around the world and um, click on the links. It'll bring up these calendars. If there's a session there for you, you'll see it. If not, they're booked. So I hope I get to see you sometime soon, either at a session or at a gathering. So uh, go to my events page and see where I'm going to be near you. And I hope to meet you. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs> oh my God.